seated. So here's a spiritual application and conclusion of a powerful story of the blind man receiving sight. Now, here's a question. Jesus said, verse 39, for judgment I am come into the world that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. Is, does this verse contradict chapter 3 and verse 17? Flip back and look at chapter 3 and verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So according to this verse and in John 12, 47, Jesus was sent to was not sent to condemn the world. But in this passage, Jesus says, for judgment I have come into this world. Jesus meant that he came to pronounce decisions on the ungodly like a judge. The blind who came to sight are those who are admitting their helplessness and inability to trust Jesus for salvation. Those who see and become blind are those whose self-trust and pride blinds them to the wonders of Jesus. He doesn't condemn them by making them blind. They blind themselves by rejecting him, and Satan contributes to that blinding. So what do we get as we finish this uh, passage? The first thing is all of mankind like the man in the story, are born spiritually blind. So the man in the story was born physically blind too, but everybody starts off spiritually blind. That's why Jesus said, For judgment I am come to the world, that they which see, might, uh, see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. In Romans chapter in verse 11 the Bible says there's none that understandeth there's none that seeketh after God if there's none that understandeth that means that we're blind we don't understand now I alluded to this a little bit this morning and, and I think I'll probably be alluding to this um, throughout the month of June uh, you especially if you're doing Facebook, depending on your, your circle of friends, you will, you will see some, some rainbows and some demonstrations and stuff. And, and if you go to New, New York City, oh, Lord, help you, um, uh, you'll see all kinds of, of things uh, about Pride Month. And um, I think sometimes what happens is, and if you, you find someone, a friend of yours, or an acquaintance or a loved one that gets caught up into the whole alphabet soup quagmire, um, then uh, sometimes you want to, it seems, some of the stuff seems so obvious to us, we want to get into a fight about that. No, it's sin, or no, you know, whatever. Um, or, if it's, if it's the gender issue. We want to get into a fight about that. There's only, you know. But here's the deal. You can't make an unsaved person think like a saved person. Is the fact that someone is caught up in the alphabet soup uh, deception, is that what's sending them to hell? No. What's sending them to hell? Specifically, unbelief. If you don't believe in Jesus, you're condemned already. So, nine out of ten times or more, folks who don't believe in Jesus are some way or another trusting in their own works. Folks marching in the parades will um, 
think for sure that they are doing something moral and bold and triumphant and should be applauded for it. If we try to engage them on that alone, I'm afraid that they, that's going in the wrong direction. What we need to show them is look at Jesus loves you. He died on the cross to pay for your sins, all of them. Amen? And uh, so anyway. Everyone is spiritually blind. In this passage, we find that there are those that realize it. The blind man who now could see is starting to realize there's something more about Jesus. Now, listen. Let me ask you this. Do you think that this blind man was saved as soon as he received his sight? No, why not? Specifically. He didn't believe yet. How do we know that he didn't know Jesus or didn't believe? Because what? Let's, let's, what? What words? Well, we, okay, we have that. Yes. Didn't know who this son, but there's something else. How about this? Whether he's a or not. I don't know. Here's one thing I know. I was, you know, I was blind, now I see. So, not really a strong testimony into the character of Jesus. He's a sinner. I don't care, I can see. Hmm. So he's not quite there yet. But, he got there. Jesus heard that they had cast him out when they found him. When he found him, he said, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered, who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? He was ready. Definitely had his, his attention. And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast uh, both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. By the way, how cool is it that he's saying, You have seen him. He hasn't seen that many folks yet. How cool is that? You've seen him. And it's he that talketh with thee. And he saith, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. The spiritually blind that realize it can recognize their condition. As it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. They're all gone out of the way. They're all together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. I remember when I got saved. Before I saw who Jesus was, God the Holy Spirit had torn away the cloak over my sin, and I saw who I was. And that's kind of what's happening here. Oh my goodness. You know, I was blind, but now I see. And starting to recognize I'm in trouble. When you realize that they're helpless and in that condition, straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Okay, you know what? I realize I'm short. I, I, I've fallen short. I, I don't have it all. But, oh, God, can you help me? And these folks that are starting to recognize their spiritual blindness come to Jesus to be relieved from that condition. God sent not his own son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved and then receive deliverance. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, and hath sent me to 
heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. How cool is that? That's uh, the passage, the prophetic passage in Isaiah that Jesus read in the synagogue to say, hey, you know what? This is fulfilled in me. I love what the man who was delivered did when he was it, who is he? It's me. You, you've seen him. He's the one talking to me. Lord, I believe. And he what? And he worshiped. You know, when our blinded eyes see, when we get saved, when we get to that point, we say, oh, I realize where I was. Now God has given me spiritual sight. Our natural response is worship. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. The fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Then there are those who choose to remain blind. Some of the Pharisees, which were with him, heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Exactly. I, I read this through, and I have the little Muppets in my head going, yup, 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 yup. <laughs> you know, uh, my, my brain is a really strange place to be. It can be entertaining, but yeah, every time I see it, are we blind also? Yup, 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 yup. <laughs> Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you'd have no sin, but now you say, we see, therefore, your sin remaineth. It's powerful. And Jesus is saying, listen, if you are not teachable, if you are not willing to realize that someone has a perspective that you need, then your sin remains. In Matthew, Jesus tells folks about the Pharisees, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Wow. So, I think this is a good reminder for us to make sure that even though we're born again, we don't slip into the Pharisee mentality that says, oh, I see everything that I need to see. I know everything I need to know. You don't need to teach me anything. I think I've told you before, I was reading about, somebody was asking about this famous preacher and how he stayed with the stuff all these years. And I think, was it his wife that said, uh, he didn't he just once he got his conviction he never looked or thought about it or even evaluated it he's just going to stay you know that's cool if you happen to have everything right in the first place but is there anybody here bold enough to say I have everything right that explains a lot brother No, the, the point is that we need to renew our mind daily. That we need to constantly look in Scripture, constantly learn, and readjust and say, you know what? I, maybe even change positions from time to time. Not because you're following some other guy, but because you're learning more per perfectly the Word of God becoming more and more like Christ. So John 9 is a powerful story about a powerful encounter with a sight-giving Savior. We've learned that not only does Jesus give physical sight to the blind, 
but he also gives spiritual sight too. Without a faith encounter, we remain blind and unaware of the peril that lies ahead. Make sure that you make the choice to come to Jesus by faith and receive your sight. Make sure to keep on track and point everybody to Jesus. Don't try to make theologians out of unsaved people because they're not going to understand. Make saved people out of unsaved people. Give them the gospel and give them the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. And God, I pray that you would help us to, uh, to believe and receive the truth. In Jesus' name, amen.